the process of, of our acquiring the rights for Dune came about when uh, my partner, Richard Rubenstein, came in one day and said to me, what do you think about Dune? Um, and it was, a, it was a book that was uh, one of the favorite of his, it was a favorite of mine, um, and I thought it was a great idea. It had certainly the size and scope that we look for in terms of a big event project. And it had a story that just, you know, was, was a phenomenally complex and interesting and compelling story. You know, it's one of those rare situations in which um, you can find a story that you believe is very cinematic in terms of what it's dealing with, and then it has the complexity and wonderment and has something to say about itself. It's not just pure storytelling. It's wonderful storytelling with, with a message and with, with something behind it. Um, so when Richard you know, asked me what I thought about it, and I concurred that I thought it would be a great project, uh, we checked to find out who controlled the rights, you know, uh, who was representing the Herbert estate, uh, and found out that it was an agent that uh, we had done some business with in the past. And I approached the agent to find out whether or not the television rights were, in fact, available or not. And they were, fortunately for us. And uh, here we sit, three and a half years later, filming something that we had a real passion to make. Um, I think once you're involved in a project like Dune, which has such a following for it, and it, it is um, recognized as one of the classics of the genre, and one of the classic stories um, out in, you know, modern literature, that you have the ability to attract people that you normally can't attract to do projects of, of this sort. They're usually people who work in the feature film world. Um, television doesn't have the time, uh, the size, the, um, and the latitudes that, that the feature, feature does. But this is a project that is near and dear to many people's hearts. And I think that it was a situation where many people wish they had been a part of the first one, were not as satisfied as they like with how that came out. And when the opportunity arose for them to become a part of this one and they read John's script and were really turned on by what he did with it in terms of how faithful the adaptation was, that it was relatively easy, and I say relatively easy because these are substantially people of substantial talent for them to come aboard because they really wanted to be a part of something that they saw as being very special. Um, and so we're very fortunate, you know, to be able to attract somebody like a William Hurt who was a very big fan of the book, and Vittorio Storaro, who was a fan of the book, and you know speaks of it with such great passion. And uh, um, Kraka, the production designer, and Theodore Pishtek, they all were basically enticed by what they were, um, w what this project was. They, they were they were enticed by the ability to become a part of this thing. And w generally, what happens in one of these things is not only is the material attractive, but as other people begin to sign up for it, they also become part of the attraction to become a part of it because you get a sense that you're doing something that's not quite the norm in the television business. And we're fortunate enough that we had the support of the Sci-Fi Channel to be able to, um, and Beta, to be able to do this as a six-hour miniseries, which basically gives us four and a half hours running time for the project. And the changes that we made to the book were so nominal um, to sort of condense certain things. And we also highlight certain aspects of things that we cut so that the fans of the book feel that it's there as part of it. It's a nuance to a scene if it's not as fully developed as it may have been in the book. To me, the, the key to a good ad adaptation is creating what is called the illusion of fidelity. And what I mean by that is, is that you really capture the spirit and the essence of the book, that you do make adaptations because you're talking about a different medium. And even where we made the biggest adaptation from the book, which is we, we more fully developed the character of Princess Irulan, who is more of a narrator in the book, and we made her mo a more vibrant, real figure, is that you really sort of get a sense that this is sort of how Herbert really saw this character, that we're really not straying very far afield from emotionally what he's doing with this character in the narrative form. And then we have the ability then of, of with the input of people like Vittorio who comes up with color schemes that sort of captures the emotional, you know, points of each of the characters' growth, developments, the travails that they go through, of again capturing other aspects of, of, the, 
of the book. So our, our hope here, and I think John did a magnificent job with the script, that is now being amplified with, by the production crew that we put together with John and, and the cast, is that we're really capturing the book. We're, we're, we're as faithful to the book as we possibly can be. Dune, when you re reduce it down to its barest essentials, is really the coming of age of a messiah. Um, it, it's, it's the story of a young boy who grows into a man and, and eventually the emperor of the universe. And I don't know if you can have a better job than that. I hear it pays very well and a lot of perks. But anyway, it's, it's really, it, it's a story of him coming to age and really becoming the messiah and the emperor. And it's set against what is very much almost like a sword and saucer tale. It's got some Shakespeare in it, it's got some um, old, epic, English, um, almost medieval tales to it. But it really draws upon, you know, the myths and legends that are part of Western culture and who we are. And as such, it, it, it's something that really sort of connects with people and I think is, is the key to its mammoth success as, as a book and hopefully its continued success as a, as a miniseries. Well, the, uh, the first cast member that, that, we, um, that became attached to the project was William Hurt, who's playing Duke Leto. And I think that um, what he brings is brilliant acting. I mean, he's, he's a star, and, and, but he's a, a star who has a long lineage of, of you know, fine acting um, in his career. And he, he brings a quality uh, to this piece um, that, that helps keep it at the elevated level um, that we have running across the board in terms of with production crew and personnel as well. And Uwe is a very big star in Germany and uh, when we went to Germany to do some casting uh, and met with our partners in Germany, uh, we met with Uwe and we were very, very impressed by him, really liked him a lot, found him very appealing and very magnetic. And then we saw some film of him and we just became convinced that you know, he'd be the perfect complement to William Hurt as sort of the, the, the person who the baton is passed to in terms of taking care of Paul's education as in a father figure. Uh, the search for Paul was something that um, we, we searched uh, all over Europe and throughout the States and we found a young actor out of England by the name of Alec Newman um, who is just a brilliant actor. We, we, we saw a couple films that he was in and we're very impressed with him and John met him while he was in England doing some casting and right after he called me, uh, he met with Alec, he called me up to tell me how excited he was that he thought that he found his Paul which we've been searching long and hard for and uh, I got a copy of the tape and got equally as excited with him and, and as we are midway, over midway through the production uh, I don't think we could have made a better choice for the character of Paul. Uh, we also then approached Giancarlo Giannini to play the role of the Emperor. And Giancarlo has been a, a favored actor of both John and I for many, many years. And uh, when we explored whether or not he might be available for the piece, he was. And he knew the piece well and, of course, knew Vittorio, who he had um, been involved with in a couple movies in the past with and worked with before. And uh, he wanted to partake in this right away. And uh, so he came on board. 